Hey, welcome to a new episode of Princella's Real World. I'm your girl, Princella. If you like real world, real news, and real views, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any content. Now, with that being said, today's commentary is based on the new abortion laws. Now, I'm not going to be doing commentary based on how I feel about them. But I am going to be doing commentary based on the reality of them. And because of that, this is going to be a multi-episode commentary. So that way I don't overload you or bombard you with things in just one video. Because this is multi-layered. So we need to look at it from multiple aspects. So this commentary is going to be based on about eight episodes. All right. So I want to start off with episode number one speaking about the misconceptions of abortion and people say well, what misconception are you talking about the misconception that i'm speaking about is the belief i tell people all the time the world is not real and people don't understand what i mean when i say the world is not real the world is a projection of your core beliefs. You see the world through the filters of your beliefs. So if you believe it to be true, everything you see and everything you do is going to be based off of your belief that whatever you believe is true. Okay. The misconception about abortion is that abortion is 100% the responsibility of the female that every decision about abortion is 100 percent her and her only that the child and the male is a victim of the big bad ir sexually irresponsible female who uses abortion as a means to evade responsibility this is not a male issue, it's only the woman. And she must be stopped from her irresponsible behavior. This is very, very interesting. And Priscilla, why you say that's a misconception? Because it's true. If she don't want no kids, she need to keep her legs closed. Tim Murphy. Tim Murphy is one of the gentlemen, gentlemen, who is rallying for anti-abortion. But he asked his girlfriend to get one. Wait a minute. If abortion is solely 100% the woman who's the big bad murderer who's using abortion to evade responsibility, why would a male ever ask her to get an abortion? What is his purpose for asking the woman to get an abortion? Because the reality is, is that males often use abortion as a backup plan for them to also evade responsibility. He uses his power, his mouth to get into the head of the female to persuade her to get an abortion. That is coercion that the male often participates in. Oh, I might be stepping on some toes because I might be triggering people who want to put all of the blame on the female. Well, we are going to look at a few things here. Okay. Back in 1999, there was a study. There was a study done on the male and his participation in abortion. This was done at the Oxford Academy. 
And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to read the abstract and I'm going to read the first paragraph of the introduction. If you want to further investigate and read this, I will post the links in the description. Okay. So the male partner involved in legal abortion. It was done October 1st, 1999. Abstract. This study comprises 75 men who have been involved in legal abortion. The men answered a questionnaire concerning living conditions and attitudes about pregnancy and abortion. Most men were found to be in stable relationships with good finances. More than half clearly stated they wanted the woman to have an abortion, while 20 stressed that they submitted themselves to their partner's, to their partner's decision. Only one man, one out of the 75, wanted the woman to complete the pregnancy. Apart from wanting children within functioning family units, the motivation for abortion revealed that the desire to have children depended on the ability to provide qualitatively good parenting. More than half of the men had discussed with their partner what to do in an event of pregnancy and half had decided to have an abortion if pregnancy occurred. More than half expressed ambivalent feelings about the coming abortion using words such as anxiety, responsibility, guilt, relief, and grief. In spite of these contradictory feelings, prevailing expectations concerning lifestyle make abortion an acceptable form of birth control. A deeper understanding of the complexity of legal abortion makes it necessary to accept the role of paradox, which the ambivalent reflects. Obviously, men must constitute a target group in efforts to prevent abortion. I want to make that last sentence very clear. Obviously, men must constitute a target group in efforts to prevent abortion because behind the majority of abortions, there is a secondary decision maker behind it. The only thing that you see is the woman actually getting it. But that doesn't describe everything that happens up to the abortion. Everything behind the scenes matters. And don't tell me that everything behind the scenes does not matter when you want to know what happens behind the scenes of things that you believe matters to you. You want to see what goes on behind the cameras, not just what the cameras show. So what goes on behind the scenes is very, very important. Now, the introduction. I told you that I was going to read that to you. Just the first paragraph. If you want to finish reading this uh, study, this academic study, you can go to the links in the description. Okay. The introduction says studies investigating men in abortion situations are extremely rare. Stop right there. You want to know why people have the beliefs that they have is because they're basing their beliefs off of the information that's at hand. They're basing it off of what everything looks like because there is no focus on the male participation in abortion. He is literally in the shadows. He's literally throwing stones and hiding his hand and using the woman as a shield. He's actually back there in her ear messing with her mind, trying to persuade her to get the abortion and using her as a shield so that she is taking the brunt of the blame, even though he was the primary driver behind her even choosing to get an abortion in the first place. All right. So most studies of legal abortion are focused on the women 
and when abortion and contraception are discussed, attention is mostly centered on the role and responsibility of the woman. None of it is focused on the male. Zero. Very little. And so just because a person ain't studied something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So people have been led to believe that the male participation doesn't exist because investigations, investigating men in abortion situations are extremely rare. But we know that a whole bunch of Tim Murphys exist. Why haven't we done any studies on the Tim Murphys? Okay, anyway, let's go. All right. Hospital staff often meet only the woman and not the man in case of a legal abortion, which can result in the risk of abortion being regarded solely as a female issue. Thus, the participation of the man remains largely invisible. However, many women have stated they are influenced in their decision about abortion by the man and one of the most frequently stated reasons for terminating a pregnancy is related to the partner this was in a oxford study okay if you want to see that study more make sure you click the links below now what i'm going to do now is i have perused the internet to find different forums forums are a great place to find real people with real issues so we started the foundation off of the invisibility of male participation in abortion now we're going to show you the reality of just how invisible it is by reading some of these questions on different forms. This one, my husband wants me to have an abortion. My husband, not baby daddy, not, um, hmm, not baby daddy, not one night stand, not live in boyfriend, my husband, so they already married, wants me to have an abortion. Hello, I'm currently a mom of two, a boy and a girl, and found out last week that I was six weeks pregnant. My husband was a little nervous at first when I told him, I, um, told him and was okay with the idea, but now he says it will be a financial burden for us to have another child and wants me to have an abortion. We both make decent income, and I don't know... And I do know that we can afford another child. We would just have to scale back a bit, which my husband has come, become accustomed to a particular lifestyle. He sends me text messages every day asking if we should go through with the pregnancy. But I just get irritated when he does this. Then he wants to put the blame on me for not getting a tubal ligation after my second child was born. I know in my heart that I don't want to have an abortion. And because of my religious beliefs, I know that it's not right. But I feel that my husband may have some type of resentment or hatred towards me if I continue with the pregnancy. What should I do? The common misconception is that Women are just thrilled to go get abortions and can't wait for the relief. Can't wait to just go, quote unquote, murder a child. And the man has absolutely nothing to do with her decision. There are going to be a lot of upset men once they are going to be forced to be on child support. You are already forced to be on child support, but the government is about to really force you to be on child support now. Because, see, now you can't persuade your woman to get an abortion like you could do before. Males persuade females to do all kind of stuff. Abortion is not off the table for that. Anyway, that's, that's that's comment number one. Let's look at comment number two. My husband wants me to have an abortion. Husband number two. That wants her to have an abortion. Interesting. This is a completely different forum. Completely different person. 
My husband and I have been together for 11 years. We are both in our mid-30s, have careers, own a home, have supportive families, love each other. This is our first pregnancy, and it was somewhat unplanned. I am currently 14 weeks pregnant, and he has been freaking out, depressed, stressed for weeks and weeks. This was exciting for me and devastating for him. He has decided that abortion is the best option for us, as he doesn't think that we are ready. I was hoping he would come around, realize that life happens sometimes, see the ultrasounds, and realize it's a human being we created out of love. But he is adamant about this. I am so disappointed in him and in myself because I gave in to him last week and made the appointment for a week from today. I have been a zombie. I'm trying really hard not to hate or blame him because he doesn't want to be a parent yet. He says he likes our life the way it is. Traveling, having money, doing fun things, and having a baby will add too much stress. It might come between us. He is also frustrated that I grew attached to the baby. Really? I think about my options every minute of the day. Do I choose the man I married and trust him that this isn't right for us now? Or do I have the baby and risk him leaving me? He has threatened that or staying but resenting me and completely being unsupportive. It is so easy for people to say, F him, choose life, have the baby, it's a gift. But do I want to bring a child into this world with this turmoil? Worst case scenario, I would struggle as a single mother. That is not what I want at all. How can I bring a life in the world when my partner isn't 100% on board with me? I am so torn and feel so guilty and ashamed for even contemplating abortion. Any thoughts would help, especially if you've been in this situation one way or the other. Oh, wow. So the Oxford study on the 75 men and only one out of the 75 wanted the woman to have the child. Over half wanted the woman to have the abortion and only 20 of them submitted to the woman's decision. But more than half of those men wanted the woman to have an abortion. Two of these that we just read were married women who did not want to have an abortion, whose husbands are pressuring them to have abortions. But the common misconception is if a woman don't want children, she need to close her legs. But it's never if a man doesn't want children, he needs to keep his thing in his pants. No, no, no. Because there is very, very little research on the participation of men in abortions. But they are very active very active so they can throw rocks they can throw stones and hide their hand because even in that situation she would get 100 percent of the blame here we go here's another one dear forum i have read with great interest the many topics on this forum i would like to have some unbiased advice from people who aren't my close relatives families or friends so to start off with, my boyfriend and I have been together for two years and it's pretty serious since we have been selecting my engagement ring and we have been thinking about our future marriage. I know things can always evolve. My boyfriend has always stated that I'm the love of his life and he can't picture a life without me. My boyfriend is a lawyer in a top New York City firm and he has a great income. I am also a lawyer, but I need to think about my future as well since I do not have my bar and education to practice in the New York State. We are both 30. I'm saying this info because he's voicing that we're not financially ready, even though he's making a lot of money. I also can contribute, not to that extent, but still. When, when he says we will be scrambling money with a child, I personally feel like it's painting of a reality that's inaccurate, especially in comparison with the family or the many families that, li that lives with way less. 
I feel like this depiction of the situation is insensible to the reality of most families. I am two and a half months pregnant and had an abortion in the past when I was pretty young. I made clear at the beginning of our relationship that I wouldn't want to abort again, especially at our age. We weren't using contraception and he was well aware of it. When I told my boyfriend about my pregnancy, he broke down in tears for 45 minutes and said he was devastated and depressed. It's been a month and a half now since he knows and he still voices that he's not ready and doesn't want the baby. He is avoidant and even asked me to give it to adoption, even though I'm adopted and it's insensitive and it's a sensitive topic or to abort. He has demanded that he's been being he's admitted that he's being extremely selfish ever since the news broke. I told him that I would like him to be more involved in my pregnancy, like asking how I feel and ask about my medical appointments. And he said, since he doesn't want it, he can't really be there for me for my first pregnancy. So here's a, another male who is actually about to be engaged to this woman who wants her to get an abortion because he isn't ready. He doesn't want the child. But the common misconception is the big, bad, evil woman is going to take men's rights away and abort a child without them. They want the child so bad. But the reality is, is that men are behind the scenes helping women make these decisions. So it's not just if she don't want to have a baby to keep her legs closed. What about the male responsibility in this? What about it? Well, you don't see it because there's no one focused on it. No one is focused on it. They're not focused on the Tim Murphys. They're not focused on guys like this. This creates a skewed, irrational belief that's not real. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, this is this is uh, more of that one. Uh, this is the way he copes with it. He never mentioned how he would rise to the occasion. He only talks about forcing an abortion on me and he's now and how he's being depressed since he knows about it. I told him a few weeks ago that I would like to keep it. He's been in denial and he says that he's upset with me because I'm not considering his opinion because it should be our decision. I'm in fact considering it, but with all the resources we enjoy, I think we can have this baby. The thing is, if I get an abortion, I could, it could never be our decision since I do not want to proceed with the operation. He even alludes to the fact that he might leave me and abandon us. He also stated that if I keep it, he doesn't know when he could come around to be ready, to be genuinely supportive for me. To be honest, what should be a beautiful time, a first pregnancy, has been completely a deception because of how I feel towards his reactions and actions. His family is also very religious and wouldn't want me to have an abortion, but according to him, they also judge me if I have a child without being married and they could potentially alienate our child. In our situation, am I selfish if I want to keep it? I see my families who are formed and have many financial situations who are way worse than this. And I see the father rising to the occasion. Should I give him more time or his, is this behavior, which completely lacks empathy for me, a signal that this person is too selfish to be a father? Interesting. Interesting. Let's continue. We're not done. All right. My boyfriend wants me to abort our baby, but I really don't want to. I'm new to this, but just really needing some advice. My boyfriend of two years doesn't want to have our child. He says we're not prepared or ready financially or anything. He isn't worried about that, worried about that, but that takes time. That's something we can work at, right? 
He is in the army. He earns a good wage. I work as a healthcare assistant and halfway through doing a at home access course to get me into nursing, which will take another six months away. My family are supportive of me and what, whatever they're choose, whatever they choose. But I just don't want to bring a baby into the world without their dad. Oh, she don't want to bring a baby into the world without the dad. But the big bad evil woman just wants children to have no father. Okay. I know he'd be such a good dad as well, but he just doesn't want to do it. At first he said he wouldn't help and didn't want anything to do with the baby. Hmm. If I went through with it, but now he's realizing how down this is getting me. I have the abortion booked for Monday and I can't tell you how much I don't want to go. I'm 10 weeks along as well, nearly 11. To me, that's my, to me, that's a baby, my baby. I just don't want to do it. I'm losing serious amounts of sleep and I just can't stop crying 24 seven. I don't know what to say to make him see how important this is to me. Sorry for blabbing ladies. Wow. But women are just going to get abortions to evade responsibility. And the male ain't got nothing to do with it, huh? The male has absolutely nothing to do with abortions. This stuff paints a completely different picture. Completely different. I have a friend who aborted a baby at 17 because her boyfriend told her to. In similar ways to your situation, she's always regretted it. It was only ever partially healed some 13 years later when she finally had her son. I've had a termination when I was younger as the partner was physically abusive. So I felt I needed to break any links between us and I regretted it every day. I felt I should have and could have been stronger to give a baby a chance. Just my experiences, which have led me to the opinion that you, you may regret an abortion, but you rarely regret a child. Men may come and go, but your children are the loves in your life. I was in a worse situation than you when I got pregnant with my daughter three years ago. My partner and I had been together six months. Sick, sickness bug on the pill, by the way. He had just been laid off work and my pub had just been dropped by our brewery, brewery um, rendering me homeless and jobless for four weeks pregnant. Three years later, we are happily married with our daughter and another one on the way. There are options. Do what's right for you, but think about the long run. Good luck, chicken. If you need a chat, then feel free to message me. Okay. It's a lot of women out here on these forums looking for help because, hmm, they don't want abortions, but some guy is behind them trying to push them to get an abortion the men have absolutely nothing to do with interesting okay F fiance wants me to have an abortion do men come around after the birth i love to hear other women's experiences i want to know how men respond to babies after birth i want to know if they ever come around if they really don't want it or whether they just hate it more I'm really upset about this situation. I've read some other posts on this forum and know there are other women going through the same pain I am right now. Some really in similar position to me, which is reassuring, but it's not the same. My fiance doesn't want this baby. He says he won't be ready for marriage for at least three years, even though we've been together since we were kids. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't even contemplate children in five, not until we were having everything checked off the list, career, house, you know, et cetera. His job is stressful for responsibilities. It's not too long hours. It's, it just demands concentration though. And he's definitely not kid proof, very cerebral, ultra, ultra, ultra utilitarian. He loves me though. And I don't think it's me, but his inability to cope with anything outside of his comfort zone or be an adult. He would be living in a den uh, of his own filth if I didn't clean up after him. 
He is quite easygoing except when it comes to our life plan and most especially children. Basically, I told him I wouldn't have an abortion and he left me. Okay, he left me. He said I shared his dream. I'd have 20 abortions. He said if I shared his dream, I'd have 20 abortions if that's what it took for us to have the future together. That's so that's so interesting. That's so interesting that this is being said. We're, we're, we're almost done with these, with these. I have tons of them, but I'm just, I just want you to see some of these just so you can see just how much of a gray area we're dealing with. It's an extremely gray area. Hi, Emily. I totally understand how you feel. I too have recently found out I was pregnant and it was completely unplanned. My boyfriend says exactly the same thing, that it's not what he wants, that he wanted the perfect house with good schools nearby, that we are not financially ready. He's 37 and still won't commit until he has his plans in place. He's made it pretty clear that he wants to have that he wants me to have an abortion. And if I don't, then he still wants nothing uh, more to do with it or me. This is, this is what's hidden from the public eye. This is what's hidden. Hiya with my daughter. She was very planned, but my boyfriend still turned around and said he didn't want me to have her. He left me when I was 12 weeks. I came home one day and found that he moved out and left a note saying to leave him alone. A few weeks later, he got in touch and said he would only come back if I didn't continue the pregnancy. Do you see these things that you don't really hear about? But you got guys out here painting themselves to be the victims. But you also have women who know that this is how a lot of guys operate who still post the blame on the female, yet the male is the driving force behind a lot of these decisions. All right. My ex who was with who I was with for over two years wanted us to try for a baby. And at 21, I fell pregnant. He said, get rid of it. Have an abortion, blah, blah, blah. Even offered to pay for it. Interesting. And I said no. And now I have a five-year-old son who has not seen, who he has not seen since he was one week old. So even for the child support situation, all of these guys who want females to get abortions and try to force them to get abortions and they don't. And they leave and they just walk out because they ain't ready. This sounds to me that males also use abortion as a means to escape responsibility for themselves. And they use their sexual prowess or their manipulative ways to get into the mind of the female to force her or persuade her to have a child, even by threatening to leave her as a single mother. So if we're going to be honest about this, we have to destroy the misconception that this is 100% a woman's issue. All right. I'm not going to read anymore because I have a whole list of them here. And if you want, you can find them just as well. The whole purpose of this is to show you that what you believe is real is not. Because there is no focus on the male participation, just as the study said. It's extremely rare to find a study on male participation in abortion. So that means there needs to be more focus on it just to show you how much the male is participating in this reality. All right, that's my time for episode number one. Episode number two is about the abortion laws are not what you think they are. They're not for the purpose that you think they are for. 
Make sure you click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I upload. Please leave your comments and let me know what you think because I really value your opinion. Leave a comment below. Check the links in the description so you can be linked up to all of the information. Peace. Y'all have a good day.